Well, until very recently, there were no approved therapies for NMO. There were no proven therapies for NMO. All we had were case series and anecdotes to guide off-label use, empiric-based use of treatments. And more recently, we've seen uh, several clinical trials move forward in NMO, uh, resulting in the uh, approval of the very first treatment for NMO, which is echolizumab. Um, and that uh, product was approved uh, just about two years ago. Um, that's a drug that's been used for atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome, for myasthenia gravis and paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, uh, and now is also indicated for NMO. Very uh, potent medication, works incredibly well in NMO. Um, it's administered by IV infusion once every uh, two weeks. Um, after a loading period of time where you receive IV infusions every week. And because of the frequency of administration, uh, many NMO patients uh, choose to per perhaps not go on that therapy due to the inconvenience of receiving biweekly infusions. So we've been using it in my personal practice in cases of extreme um, disease where people have very refractory NMO and uh, are willing to undergo the inconvenience of those infusions. The new product that just got approved, inabolizumab, in contrast, has an IV infusion that's uh, twice a year. So you're looking at a big difference in terms of infusion frequency, uh, two times a month versus uh, two times a year. And we have a lot of experience with B cell depleting antibodies in MS. Uh, people who take care of MS patients often also take care of NMO patients. Um, and we have a lot of experience with B cell depletion in the MS space. Uh, and so um, this drug, inabolizumab, that just got approved is also a B cell depleting antibody. And it's administered with the same type of frequency as ocrelizumab is used in MS. So I think the familiarity with B cell depleting antibody, the uh, low frequency of infusion and the excellent um, safety and efficacy profile of this product make it very appealing for, for use. You know, the, the key feature of NMO are these severe attacks. And with each attack, there's a good chance that the patient is going to be left with permanent disability from that attack. And so our uh, primary goal in treatment of NMO is to prevent further attacks from happening. And remarkably, both products that have been approved have spectacular efficacy with respect to preventing future attacks. They both are very, very effective treatments, remarkably so when, when you look at medical therapies in general. So the key message I think that people need to know about is early diagnosis, accurate diagnosis, use of liberal use of this commercially available antibody test in patients who are coming in with spinal cord inflammation or optic nerve inflammation, and knowing that there are therapies that are available that have been proven to be effective in NMO and are commercially available right now.